What's going on, YouTubers? For ladies and gentlemen, it's the Natural Born Thriller. You have to bear with me here because I'm getting ready for work. So, as I'm getting ready for work, I'm going to do my absolute best to do this review. Pertains to welcoming you all, YouTubers, to this NWA, well, National Wrestling Alliance review. Pertains to giving you NWA Empower, a show. That will feature all women in this first ever all women's pay per view for the NWA. First time ever for NWA. So, the show from August 28th, 2021, at uh, St. Louis, uh, Missouri, at the Chase uh, Corinthian Ballroom. The tagline was NWA's first ever all women's event under the promotion of, once again, the National Wrestling Alliance. Your commentators. Let me first get um, the commentators away first. Um, I thought it would be right here, but it's not here. It's the you know there's no commentators on in here. You know usually they'll put it there. Let me maybe double check here. Um, one of them I forgot. <laughs> you know, one of them's name. Uh, yeah, another guy uh, who's in the middle. Uh, um, if I remember, wasn't um, the the commentary from when they first uh, brought you know, brought um, NWA um, um, back in 2019 on you know, potential stream on YouTube, um, uh, for power, you know, NWA power. Uh, it was Joe something, and uh, no relations to Jake something. <laughs> um, I try to remember if I could remember. Just give me one moment, folks. I'm, uh, I apologize. Uh, and on top of that, I'm, I'm trying to get ready for, uh, for work. So let me just try to find find out his name. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the other guy's name on here either. And what a surprise, not, not here either. Um, but uh, I'm about to get to, uh, this one person too, by the way, where it tends to. Uh, her beyond commentary as well for NWA power, which uh, you need a woman's perspective uh, for for this uh, you know pay per view. Just give one moment. All right. Hmm. I thought I spelled it wrong. NWA. Power. Wait, that was guy was there too for Fire of the Ray Power. Is she a com is she a full time commentator for the show? Because again, I haven't been keeping up anything about what's going on with um with NWA, so I I wouldn't know. No, but I mean I mean I'll keep keep fine. Joe Galley, Joe Galley uh, was the guy that um who started up started off back in um you know when when NWA was on YouTube for NWA Power, but now you know you know after the whole pandemic happened. You know, now they're on Fight TV, which is they're doing the shows. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Joe Galley, Velvet Sky, and some guy in, in the middle who was there, he didn't really introduce himself. Um, I don't remember if his name was even brought up, but I thought, you know, basically what it seems to the commentary team, I thought it was good, especially having Velvet Sky there. Now, Velvet Sky is also, um, you know, in, in the, you know, NWA, so... So yeah, she's a commentator for NWA. She doesn't wrestle no more. She's um, retired from wrestling. And there you go. Now let's get back to everything on the show here. Now, hold on a second, folks. Uh, my, my sound's got caught up here under the, under the dresser. Here we go. So, just want to get that out of the way. And yeah, some referees that I don't know who they are. Um, you know, one of them um, look like uh, maybe in their 30s. The other one look like in her, in her 20s, and the other one look like she's in her mid 50s. So, yeah, there, there's that. So, you have four, you know, uh, producers for this show. Um, pertains to Mickey James, who is the executive uh, producer of this whole thing. Um, of in the in power. You also have, you know, other ones like Gail Kim, Jazz. And Medusa. 
Now, how does show open up? They open up with a show where it tends to a view package. Um, and I thought the view package that they did was, was pretty cool. You know, from, from the old uh, woman's era. Uh, even though they didn't, they didn't show much of it. But an old woman's era. Uh, from, you know, which is black and white. To the present. And, you know, you also had, um some real packages that um, involve, you know, which is the matches that's going to take place. And, um, obviously not, they didn't feature all of them, but just the, on the ones that, that, that are about titles and, and, and whatever have you. So, so yeah, um, just, I thought it was a good, uh, good um, video promo. Oh, uh, this all the show. And I thought it delivered. And then we get to a segment to start the show. And it's basically uh, uh, Aaron Stevens and I'm assuming his tactic partner that um very um you know forget his name here. Which let me bring it bring it up here. J.R. uh Cartos. Cartos. So J.R. Cartos and uh Aaron Stevens, they were um you know doing this whole this old school NWA black and white uh interview. Well, this uh, interviewer, uh, May Valentine, uh, was there. Yeah, she still works there. Um, she used to be the, um, you know, the on-screen girlfriend of Isaiah uh, Royce, or I think it's Royce Isaiah, or is it um, Isaac? I can't remember now. Uh, but he, he's not there no more, unfortunately. Uh, or tends to being part of uh, strictly business. So, but anyways, I'm not trying to find my. Socks. What about? Do I need to wear? Oh, sorry. So there. Uh, sorry about that, folks. But yeah, those were an old school um, your interview in black and white, and it was well, it was very well done. And basically, it pertains to, you know, it pertains to men, uh, men's wrestling, you know, and then also in um, um, you know, May Valentine mentions you know, it pertains to women's um, it pertains to um, you know, again um. Attacking titles, and one day uh, it's, a woman's gonna have an all woman peer review and all that, right? And then you know you have um the, the heels of Aaron uh, Stevens and Jr. are uh, basically you know laughing at it and uh, brushing it off like like that will never happen. And wink wink, yo know, yo know, wink wink, you know those that say that something like that will never happen, which is to a uh, woman can't draw money, a uh, woman's cannot have an all woman peer review. Women's, uh, you know, women that have tagging titles, uh, in 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 the wrestling in the in the women's division of pro wrestling. Um, and then we get to, you know, into the uh your arena of, you know, of the ballroom, you know, the Chase Ballroom, and you got and they say it was a solo, a solo crowd. Now it wasn't a big crowd, but it was a way bigger crowd than Impact Wrestling's uh crowd. I'll say that. Uh, and they were louder. So, yeah, um, they 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 packed it out. I mean, there, uh, there's no uh, there's no other way to um, pack it out either way. Um, I don't know, but wait, hey, uh, um, I thought that it was a, a success there for the um, where it tends to um, women, you know, can can draw money. Where it tends to um, you know, having a woman pay per view. Big James so far proved that wrong so far. Now all we need to do, do you know to do now is to see how the buy rate looks. Now, Martins to the buy rates. I think uh, it's kind of slick how they did, did how they did it too, because um, I talked about it before where I did the um, um, actually I, I don't remember if, if I did it yet. No, I, I didn't do it yet. I, I bought it, but I, I didn't do it yet. Um, that, that'll be that'll be later on. So, uh, hope, hopefully I'll get it done before I go to work. So, so yeah. Um, I thought that was um, you know, um. Uh, a, a telling there that, uh, when, you know, when it tends to uh, who's who's on the car as well, you know, they they can um they can draw, they can, uh, you know, you know, make money up for them, you know. So and I, I'm getting something right here, so that could, um, all right, so yeah, so and again, I, I apologize, folks, I'm getting I'm getting I'm ready for work, so I not I need fine, so yes, my. Well, besides my 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 work pants, um, gotta put on my socks on first before I put on my my work, my work pants. Speaking of which, 
I got my work pants on, right? Um, let me continue. Uh, as I put on my shoes. So, after, um, you know, all that. Also, let me get to the op uh, introduction of Hardcore Country. Mickey James comes out. She's excited. She gets in the ring. And the stage itself, it was, you know, it's whatever, you know. Not much you can do in the ballroom, but um, it was all right. So Mickey Jane starts cutting a promo, where it tends to um, have a walk, basically um, walk into all, all you know, so it's all women's pay per view, you know, event of Empower, and basically uh, you know, the whole promo is about proving the on um, the naysayers and that all that was wrong and all that, and and then she start getting emotional about it. And hey you and that's basically what it was. And yeah, it was a good promo from Mickey James. Not much to say about the promo, but um, but I, I felt it though. I felt the um the, the promo that she was talking about and everything. So um, it tends to uh, you know, I mean, there yeah, yeah, uh, things to have on the show too, uh, which we'll get to. Um, but it tends to promos itself. Mickey James uh won that one. Um, you know. Which I'll get to that one when I get to those highlights. So, and then, you know, all of a sudden the show began. The opening match. Now, here's the thing. Um, there was nothing about the, you know, the, the match here where it seems to, you know, uh, Christy, uh, J uh Janice, Jen Janice versus Sky Blue. Because that was, that was advertised. Um, but, not, I didn't see it. Uh, I don't know where where it was. Um. So I don't know if it's a pre-show. I don't know if it's something that I missed. Maybe it was it was a dark match. I I don't I don't see anything on here that says that says otherwise. Oh, that's I read the wrong one. Oh yeah, I read the wrong one. <laughs> um. There we go. So yeah, uh, the match happened with Sky Blue versus Christy uh, Janus. Uh, five minutes and eleven seconds it lasted. Again, I didn't see it, so I wouldn't know. I'm asking myself, how the hell are you gonna advertise this match? Uh, to be on the pay per view, and then once we get to the pay per view, all of a it's not there. So that was a, I was I was I was very disappointed there. It's like uh yo uh, that was a, a time uh, strip, strip uh thing or whatever. Yo, you could uh, um yo show that on the pay per view. Yo, at least mention it on the pay per view about this match hap happened and. If you didn't see it, yo, know, there's a way for you to watch it. Just um, you know, um, find on Fight TV. Maybe maybe also you know you go somewhere you can watch it for free. You know, or it just do a, a pre-show. That's what they did, but nothing, nothing like that. And like, what's the point of uh, even having this match on you know on the car if you're not even gonna have it on the pay-per-view for uh, people to watch it? Cause I, I want to see it because I want to see um you know these type of women's um you know for other promotions and they were they were not even out there um after the show was over. So I'm like, where were they? I, I, unless I, I, I didn't, you know, unless, um, I couldn't spot them, you know, because, you know, the camera, um, oh, the camera works, my God, I'll get to that. But, you know, uh, the big problem on the show here was the camera, was the camera, um, issues. Uh, there was a lot of problems on the show. Uh, and, you know, and, and the referees were, were rolling them. Uh, the camera, the camera works. Uh, man, they, they give Kevin Dunn, um, a run for their money for, uh, for the camera works they were doing. My God. Um, or I'm gonna talk about you by the way. Um, make sure it's all, um, it feels right. But yeah, but Sky Blue won the match. Uh, so there goes my prediction there of, you know, Christy, uh, on Genesis winning. The Obli match was actually the interpromotional triple threat match from AEW, Diamante versus Chick uh, Tormenta from Triple A of Lucha Libre versus Kylie Ray from NWA. Yeah, so Kylie Ray showed up. She actually showed up. Let's see if she shows up uh, as um, you know NWA uh, seventy three. We'll see. Um, so as far as uh, Jake Tormenta, uh, I thought I recognized her, but no, it's not her. Uh, I I was thinking of someone different. So yeah, uh, uh, so what I thought of was someone else. So yeah, um, I have no idea who she is. And when I saw her, uh, she was not. Really, she didn't really impress me that much. Um. Kylie Ray though she oh by the way Kylie Ray um she must have had, um you know you know be, uh in good 
fit uh shape which is her um you know have some abs not saying um she had the, um you know those type of those type of abs where you could see uh and like uh you know like she's a bodybuilder or anything not, i'm not trying to say that uh but she had this she has some own um, good abs you know like a Kira Hogan, for example Kira Hogan's got some good, good abs that you could see um not not this not in this case Kyrie um lost those abs uh she's because she's on getting a little thick uh she's looks she's looks the same uh but she's getting look like she's getting a little thicker uh and i finished tying my shoes now but uh i don't know uh she just look at the same Ky Kyrie um where it tends to be in, 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 in top fit shape like i thought she was yeah Marte was uh was 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 good uh, this match, by the way, was not um, the best match. It was not even a good match. Um, there were some spots there where, you know, Chick uh, was um, lost in a way. There were some spots where, um, you know, that was just, you know, not not very good at all. And, and the referee um, was was off guard, um, was off uh, cue, and not in the right position to uh, for the counts. And sometimes, in the end. It was Diamante winning the match. I'm like, oh, well, okay. Diamante from AEW, she won the match. Now, it wasn't against Kyrie Ray, obviously. They, protect, they protected Kyrie Ray off losing here. So, if anyone had to lose, I'm glad it was uh, uh, Chick Tor Tormenta. To, um, because she, I didn't like her at all. I thought she was terrible. So, Diamante got the win, which is good. Um, and, that's, and, that, and, that's, and that's that. The next match was uh, the semifinals. Now those more um on uh, tournaments that happen on the on Rotinsu's and the way women's um tag team title. Uh I just uh because again I haven't been keeping up uh NWA, Rotinsu NWA power or whatever. So you already you already had some tournaments that already happened so far, so um and they they didn't even mention it too by the way. Uh, I thought they at least mentioned it, uh of who they were uh, you know uh, who, the, who they went to. Uh, but then I could be I could be wrong. Maybe maybe this is the, maybe this is the one that they on um, this announced. I don't know because uh, I didn't see anything about Red Velvet and Kyle King on Instagram. But it tends to them being um you know you know finding uh these other uh women's uh, in this tag team tournament you know to get to this, you know to get to this point. I just didn't you know there was no mention of it no, nothing of it. I don't know. So I could be wrong. I don't know. Um again uh, so I digress. But you have the you know. He had the semifinals going on. Um, I thought they they always open up that show first, you know, instead of um, you know, the you know, the, the promotional, um, you know, but it's whoever. But you had oh yeah, the semifinals. So your semifinals for the NWA World Women's Tag Team Titles going on. Uh, the Hex, which is um, Allison K and Marty Bell versus. Uh, the Hell on Heels, which is Renee Michelle and uh, Sahara Seven. Sahara Seven, I didn't think she was good at all. Renee Michelle, uh, she actually, um, you know, yeah, she's showing a lot of improvements. Uh, Marty Bell, uh, I, I think I still think she's okay. But then we get to what happened later on uh, with, with her. Uh, you know, because spoiler, alert, the Hex did win, and Alton K, she's always been good. But this match was not good at all. <laughs> Not even uh, Allison K, who's uh, a very good wrestler. All, all, all three of the, three of them, obviously. Who comes close to her? Uh, at this point, Renee Michelle does because she's improving. Marty Bell, uh, she's right, you know, she's right up there. Uh, but uh, uh, Sahara Seven was not good at all. I mean, she has some moments and all, but other than that, she was not good at all. And the referee, and there was a lot of mis miscommunications. A lot, uh, look, there was a uh, like a uh, an accidental referee bump. You no, know, which oh. Uh, uh, there was no ref referee bump at all, but uh, it could have been uh, based on how it was done. It was, a, it was a botch moment there. Oh my god, it was t it was it was not it was not a good match at all. But the Hex win the match, which I I, I thought they would. Then we move on to the next um tournament, of uh, the semifinals of the NWA World's Tag Team Championship. It's Red Velvet and Kylan King from AEW. Uh, even though they're not saying Kylan King's from AEW, uh, but you we all know that Kylan King wrestles a lot in AEW, so. Uh, but Red Velvet and Kylie King uh, versus the uh, the Free Babes. Now, the, about the Free Babes. Where it tends to um, the Free Babes. They are, um, you know, second generation um, 
I'm assuming that all three of them are second generation, um, you know, um, wrestlers from their first generation wrestler, you know, wrestlers of of their dads. Well, except for one of them, it is, ends up being from um, of their moms. And the one from their moms was, um, Hollywood Holly J. Uh, I don't know much about her, but I, I love how she looks and I love how she carries herself. And her mom is Amazing Maria. Who's Amazing Maria? To be honest with you folks, I have no idea. And when I saw her, or when I Googled her, I'm like, yep, I have no idea who she is. But she was from OVW. Apparently she was a former two-time uh, OVW Women's Champion, I think. I, I, I could be wrong on that. Let me just double check. Yeah, this doesn't say at all. Okay, uh, she's a six-time, excuse me, a six-time in the Bay Women's Champion, and, and she's Canadian, by the way. So, basically, uh, you have a Canadian um, babe uh, on uh, all this whole Frappet, you know, all this free babes that, 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 that they're doing on in the Bay. Basically, their version of the Frappet's free birds. The other one, who is, well, I'll get to her later, by the way, uh, is Jazzy Yang. And Jesse Yang is um, the daughter of Jimmy Yang, or in you know in the WWE audience eyes, Jimmy Wang Yang. Yo, so Jesse Yang uh, was in the match by the way, not Holly J, um, not not Hollywood, uh, Holly Holly Jane, Hollywood Holly Jane meant to say. She was um uh, you know in you know uh, at at ringside. For you know, Miranda Gordy and Jazzy Yang, uh, and yeah, um, as far as Jazzy uh, Yang, you know, I can see the resemblance. As far as uh, Ho Hollywood uh, Holly J, uh, I don't see that much of a resemblance, but thanks to uh, her mother's looks, between the two, and seeing a picture of it, uh, not really, not really much of it. Maybe, maybe the eyes, maybe again, maybe just the eyes. But I digress. As far as Miranda Gordy, pertains to uh, the resemblance of, of her dad, uh, Terry Gordy. You know, Bam Bam Ter Terry Gordy. I definitely see the resemblance there because, oh my god, Miranda Gordy. Oh my god. She does not look like a woman. She, and the way, and the way she dressed too, you know, with her singlet, she's more of a, a tranny. I'm not saying she is a tranny, not, not judging. If that if that's the case or not, but I'm just um pointing out of of what, how I, how I saw Miranda Gordy. She looked like a man. Um, not not to be disrespectful or anything, not not trying to be disrespectful, not trying to make fun of her. No. It's just how I see it. I could definitely see the resemblance of uh, Miranda Gordy and her and her dad, Terry Gordy. So, as far as the match was. Match was, uh, it was solid for what it was. Um, even, oh, uh, this match was, uh, was a mess too in the way. And surprisingly, Red Velvet and Kylie King won the match. I'm like, well, really? Okay. I was not expecting that, but in the, and at the same time, good. I'm glad. I want to see, um, you know, uh, a better match than, um, you know, than what, than I was expecting, um, that, um, to see. Returns to the Free Babes versus the, the Hex. So, I'm, I'm glad. So now we get to uh, a segment. Gail Kim comes out, and Gail Kim cuts a promo about you know, uh, you know, NWA and power or whatever. And she basically also says she's not really much of a talker or anything. You know, which you know, we don't care uh, of her being much of a talker. We care about what she uh, has been delivering uh, in the ring for the for the last twenty years. And she talked about how you know, for the last twenty years of uh, being in the business and everything. Uh, you know, for everything she's um done for blood, sweat, and tears. Also, she gets interrupted by her old nemesis, her old rival from Impact Wrestling, Taryn Terrell, who is who is part of NWA. She comes out along with um Jen and I, and I, I can't remember the other uh, woman's name. Uh, that that was with her as well. And I think she's supposed to have a match too, but I, I don't remember if she's supposed to have a match or not. But I don't know. I digress. Um, but they were out there, and. Basically, uh, you know, Tertero's, um, being all heel and everything and annoying. 
and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't um, find any heel heat out there. I just I found more of annoying heat and gore heat because of the way she was talking and the way she was uh, squeaking, whatever. I don't know. It was it was it was out. It was ridiculous. Basically, she wanted Gilkin to leave. Gilkin didn't want her to leave. She gets on her face, whatever. And all of a sudden, yo, yo, turn to roll. Um, yo, was annoyed that so she's like, yo, know, tried to um, yo, know, take her out with um, yo, know, with, with the two of, of our lackeys. All of a sudden, we hear uh, familiar music. Dum, 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 dum. And all of a sudden, awesome Kong appears, and like, holy shit, that was awesome. I did not see that coming. And full um, yo, know, awesome Kong gear. And then she gets in the face of Gail Kim. Let's see what's the women. Wait, okay, she's going. And all of a sudden, you got um, uh, these two women, yo, know, are lackeys of of yo, know, Turn to Rel, uh, um, between uh, Austin Kong and Austin Kong um, was annoyed at that and takes both of them out, and and just led to uh, yo, know, Turn to Rel leaving the ring like a coward. And Gail Kim would portray after her, but um, you know they they all ran away. Um, but yeah, Austin Kong took out um, you know, one of um, you know, one of the two of you know. The lackeys, especially a Jedi who's supposed to be booked book, book as a monster, and she takes the, she gets taken up by the original monster and also Kong. And Gail Kim, yo, is talk, talking trash as they're leaving to them. Also, Kong is behind, um, you know, Gail Kim trying to get her attention, and they finally she did, and then she gets her, totally gets in the ring, and she gets a microphone, and because of promo, and she says she's not much of a talker, which obviously we know that too because uh, she's um, known to be a monster and and. and a great uh, women's wrestler in the ring, so, and it's just also kind of a promo about you know, uh, uh, uh how they go way back, you know, which is to their rivals and everything in Impact Wrestling, and all of a sudden, she started getting emotional, and saying that she had the best time of her life with her and everything, and uh, and then she said she's done, just basically it was, it was her announcement that she was done with wrestling, she's she's retired now, and so far she wants to um you know go out with her, have some um ice cream bars like that. <laughs> Ice cream bars, man. That's awesome. Fuck you, Booker T. Just say you struck out, sucker. Don't get mad because you didn't get your own Booker T cup, sucker. But yeah, uh, back to this. So Gail Kim and Austin Kong were uh in tears and all that. They were uh, it was emotional. Uh, they got me emotional. They got Love Is Guy emotional. Um. So yeah, that oh, uh, and then and then the Venera there for um that that's a real end of Venera by the way, not the the bullshit end of Venera that WWE did with um Triple H, uh Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, and then later on they start on um, doing that match again at Saudi Arabia. Um, even before Saudi Arabia, even in Australia. So, why well, digress? But yeah, it was great though. It was a great moment there. Uh uh oh. Uh, of a, a, a phenomenal moment there, emotional moment to say the least. Uh, next match we get to the Impact Knockouts Championship, the Virtuoso, the Knockouts Champion on the Arm versus Molina, who had a, a, a unique entrance and an old, you know, uh, a nostalgia entrance, which has to do the paparazzis, you know, back in the days of WWE, you know, of Eminem. And this was now never, which is Molina, can she on go in the ring? Uh, with, with her, you know. On contrary, you know, ring rust. Uh, I was like, I don't think it's more. I don't think it's much of a ring rust because, again, you know. Uh, but then again, you know, you could say that too because she hasn't been wrestling anywhere else. Of, of you know, since uh her departure from WWE back, uh, how how, how long that was, by the way. What a couple, about a couple of years? It's like a long, a long time. But. Maybe it is that. Maybe that, that's that's probably. Or maybe she um you know hasn't been trained that much you know since leave, leaving um you know the WWE because you know uh, it's, it's not like she couldn't work uh, elsewhere. Those those Impact Wrestling at the time you know TNA Wrestling yeah she could have went there. There's other women's promotions she could have went as well, you know in the Indies. So, but uh, it does even lose your underground where she was, she was there at one, at one time but then she was gone at that. Like I don't, I didn't understand that, uh, why why that. Um, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that at all, so. Um, but yeah, um, end of A is what she came back for, and here she is, and ever since she's been coming back, 
I have not been impressed with her at all. Until we got to this match here. Deanna Perazzo versus um, Melina. Melina uh, held her own in this match against Deanna Perazzo. Deanna Perazzo uh, um, you know, uh, was doing a, a lot of carrying, but Melina uh, carried her own weight too. Uh, there was one spot that uh that got that got messed up, you know. But you know, it was not it was near it was neither uh their fault. You know, it happens. It was just uh, a, a miscommunication there. So, um, but this match was good. About by the way, it was a good match, and Molina really showed me here. Um, she really showed uh something that uh, that she should have been showing before. She uh did her moves uh pitch perfect and all that of every her move she, that she did, even her selling with her arm and her and her leg. But, you know, it was it was a very good uh, storytelling there from Molina. She really uh put all her heart and soul there, and and she let uh she put it all in the ring, and she she finally impressed me there, um, and like yeah, you you can still go, you still got it, Molina. Um, obviously Dion Prosser won, uh she won by submission, um, and there you go, not much to say. But yeah, uh, uh but Molina got a standing ovation after that too, so. And yeah, Darren Prosser being a, uh, a disrespectful um, lady, you know. And then we get to Medusa coming out in her army, um, you know, attire. <clears throat> um, you know, because her, her her husband is from the military. Um, yeah, she was uh, all decked out uh, in her uh, uni uh, you know, the army uniform and the boots. You know, she comes out, you know, she, she was going to present the end of a woman's tattoo tattoo titles uh to the winners she's on commentary with um you know this guy and joe G galley and this guy that i don't remember his name and then they, they never mention his name at all and she you know it's gonna uh you know watch this match along with them as the hex al elson k and marty bell versus red velvet and kind of king and the match is good this was a good match uh, for the NWA women's title titles uh, in, the, in the finals, and it, it delivered. You know this match really delivered. Um, there was no, and, and no, there was no um, red velvet um, botched standing move salt. <laughs> oh man, um, watch out, out. You know you'll find out. You'll you'll get to, we'll get that review when I get to it, folks. What tends to uh, happen happen on NWA? I mean AEW uh, portion of it. But this was a good match. Uh, at one point, there was a, a one spot that um that, that got, me, got, got me on my nerves, and that was the um you know the part where Mario Bell was legal, and Rev Rev went to um pin you know you know Allison K. Rev was going for the count. And some of the women, she's not legal. What are you doing? That Mario Bell is legal. Like, or oh, and I already, I already screwing up here. Uh, and this, this is from the tail end of the match. And then finally, um Mario Bell uh got the pin on. Now, now, now I can't remember who who's legal in this match. Um, I know I I think it has to be Brad Velvet. Um, but Mario Bell got the pin after the tattoo move that the Hex, the Hex did, and Mario Bell um won the match. Um, you know, for her team. So your winners and new NWA World Women's Tag Team Champions, the Hex, Allison K and Mario Bell. Mario Bell was uh emotional because uh she got a promo before the match too, by the way, where she's gonna be the first um Dominican. Uh, in NWA history to become a champion, and she did, and it was emo it was very emotion uh, emotional. Sorry, folks, I'm, I'm dusting up a little dust here. So it was a, a good moment there for both of them, and then Red Velvet and Kanye King gets in the ring, and look at like there's gonna be uh, some kind of uh, altercations, but uh, instead it was a handshake, uh, you know, out of respect, you know, sportsmanship like. And you know they pull they pull over the hex as um, as the winners and everything, um, and they were the, on the better team, um, and that was it. And you know they gave them their moments and everything, and it was awesome. So there you go. Uh, Jazz would then come out at all, folks, until later on. Um, makes me wonder why she was she didn't come out um, to do anything. Um, um, I mean she was doing something backstage, but uh, sort of being doing something on you know, on screen. She came out later on after the show. Um, but it would have been nice if she would have came out to do something. Maybe, maybe uh, she was afraid to come out because, you know, she was going to be blamed of, of maybe, maybe she was behind the whole thing where, uh, you know, for the production of, you know, of the production truck of the camera works. That was fucking terrible on the show.
Let me get to the next match. The NWA Women's World Championship, which th this should have been the main event, by the way. But I understand why this wasn't the main event because of what they did, what they did after the show. You know. But I still would prefer this to be the main event because this was a great match between the NWA Women's World Champion and uh, Camille from Strictly Business versus Layla Hirsch, who's legit from AEW. This match was great, folks. This match stole the show. The fans loved it. I loved it. The crowds loved it. Uh, yo, know, fans, crowds, whatever. You know. uh, the commentators loved it. It it was it was awesome. Now, obviously, Camille was the dominant or was the dominant force in this match, and Layla Hurst was getting her ass granted. Uh, you know, her ass uh granted um by grounded, should say, by Camille from outside. You know, steel steps. You know, swinging into the steel steps. Like, oh my god, head first and everything. I thought she make make a cut, but she was alright though. Um, and I thought she may have been bleeding, but nope. Uh, because she it looked like she hit uh, the the short part of it, but it didn't happen though. Uh, the the steel guardrail wrecking the eyes of on it. You know, uh, usually you you see it on the on the ropes, but on but instead it was on the guardrail, which was uh, nasty. Uh, yeah, should do business there by the way. Uh, in in the crowd. You know, which is um the NWA World Champion, uh, Nick Aldis. You have the N you know NWA National Champion Chris Adamas. And you have uh, Tom Latimer, the, the you know the, the the husband of Camille. Uh, basically, you know, strictly business. And oh yeah, I remember um Tim Storm. He was on commentary on, on the show, by the way. You know, um, you know the teacher, you know who's uh, up there, in, who's uh, in his fifties, and he's he's a, he's a, he's a wrestler. And yeah, he was there too, and I and I and I enjoy I I enjoy his um, his presence there. He was he was on commentary for the for the match here. He, he, he took a round off of the main event too. So yeah. Um this match was great. Uh they let her show what she can do in the match. And she did an amazing uh move off the off the top rope to Camille, which was not, it was uh it was a, 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 a thing of beauty. Camille uh you know made made Layla Hurst look good. Layla Hurst made uh Camille look good. Basically uh this match was good overall. Should have been the main event, but I digress. In the end, Camille did, did get, you know, she did get the win, and she got, she got the spear. In. That's her finish. That's her finishing move. And there you go. And there you go. That was it. Now we get to the, oh, before before we get to the main event, another another thing happened um after the match, uh so Strictly Business is celebrating, you know, all of a sudden, Trevor Murdoch, who's on the other side of the uh of the crowd, um, talking so smack. Talk some trash to make all this because their match for NWA 73 is going to um, be taking place in the main event of that show. I know for sure that's going to be the main event. You know. So yeah, um, that happened. And then we get to the main event, which is the NWA Women's Invitational Cup Gauntlet match, which is um, you know, very type of rules, except no throwing over the top rope. You have um, pin your opponent um, by a uh, yeah. Be your opponent by it. submission or pinfall, I should say, to uh, for them to be eliminated. Once every two minutes, uh, no one comes out except for one thing. Um, when when the when the first uh, well, let's see, when the first two started. Um, at after the first two came out there, we get the number three entry in there, and then once uh, the number third entry got in there, all of a sudden, you know, it felt like it's been only one minute, and then all of a sudden we get another participant in there, like some so. Was they were around time or something like that, but then again, we'll get to what happened. Um, what happened um, from this from this portion of it. So the first entry was Chelsea Green, the hot mess, and I see myself. Oh wait, wait a minute! I thought it was supposed to be uh, Lady Frost. Uh, based on what I read it from before, so I guess I was wrong. Um, you know, but it could have said it. she was going to be number one in there, but I. I guess I was wrong. But it was Chelsea Green instead, who's number one. And then it was Kara Hogan, the hottest flame, the girl on fire, who is the hottest free agent. Kara Hogan uh, and uh, Chelsea Green had history back in the, uh, Impact Wrestling. Um, and here they are, having at it. Start, starting off first. Also, let me get to um, the, the third entry. Um... Who was it? Oh yeah, it was Dunder Kitty. 
Was it Thunder Kitty? I think it was Thunder Kitty. I could be wrong, but I could swear it was Thunder Kitty. And Thunder Kitty, basically, they um they they um built her as a a hundred year old woman wrestling because she looks old. To me, it looks like she's in her sixties. Uh, I but I digress. But it's whatever. And she started kicking ass <laughs> because of, of course she does. Of course she did. Um, then we get to. Uh, Bianca uh, Corelli who comes out and based on how I saw her wrestle yeah she's 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 got potential and I thought that she's beautiful she's hot um hopefully she doesn't do no you know sock cobra like Santino Morella did <laughs> and, and uh, you know she hasn't done that so uh, and I don't think she's gonna be about that so but I thought she was good I thought she was good I wanna see more of her though um now I don't know if, if she's from the NWA I don't know if she's wrestling elsewhere, but I want to see more of her. Um, let's see. I believe this is the part where we get someone else coming out. Um, okay, so then we get to Lady Frost, who comes out. And this was the part where I got pissed off. So she comes out. And, the, you know, the graphic of her name shows there and everything, right? And the camera uh, keeps looking at her as she's outside the ring, by the way. And she's taking a long time to get in, get in the ring. And, and everything that took, and everything took all along. Everything was uh, was on on hiatus. And, you know, you had the commentators talking about the match in the, in the score in the ring. And said to myself, well, I can't see because the camera is looking at her. And I don't know what's going on, um, you know, in the produ production trucks. But what the fuck's going on? Like, who, like... What, did someone uh, sleep on, was sleeping on a job or they uh, they pressed the wrong button or they um, they fucking screwed up? They spilled some coffee or something, whatever, on, on, on the machines, whatever, that... I don't know what's going on. But And then apparently I missed um, the, the, the animation of Dumb the Kitty there. Because I thought they was going to do the whole thing where they was going to swear for us that Dumb the Kitty was hiding hiding under the ring, maybe. And then later on she was going to uh, win the match. I thought they was going to do that, but instead uh, she was actually gone. But uh, I couldn't I didn't, I couldn't tell I couldn't tell she, if she was being eliminated by pinfall submission because they they will pan the camera onto... Lady of Frost there, who's, who, has, who hasn't gotten the ring yet. Taking a long ass time to get in the ring. I say to myself, shouldn't there be a rule where if you don't get in the ring, you'll be disqualified? And, and, and it's the same thing I want to talk about with the WWE as well, because WWE um, should, not, should not get with this shit either. If you if you don't get in the ring, uh, by the time uh, you know someone comes out, you're automatically gone. You're, you're automatically eliminated because you, you're, uh, once you come out, you're, you're, you're supposed to be going in the ring. You know, because I, 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 don't, I hate that shit. I don't fucking like that shit. When you're when you're in a match like this, you're when you're getting ready to go in the match like this, it's not a smart strategy when you stay out there because at the end of the day, Lady uh, Frost do lost the match either way. And I'm disappointed that Lady Frost get in, didn't get in there. You know, because I, I like Lady Frost. She's got potential. She's got a great look. I didn't like how she was um, being used here. I'm pretty sure it's not her fault. It's the book. It's the Booker's fault. And the production is... Uh, uh, people, trucks, uh, whatever. The people from the production trucks, I should say, it's their fault. Um, that they screwed up the, um, the camera angles here. So I barely saw how the match was uh, ended up being and who got eliminated. Now, I obviously done a kid got eliminated, but still. Okay, now I can't remember uh, who got eliminated first. Was it Bianca Corelli got eliminated first, or was it done the kitty? Now I can't remember. I could swear that uh, the, uh, Bianca Kitty got eliminated first, though. I mean, Bian Bianca Corelli, you meant to say. Now, now, get, now, I'm, now I'm all fired up here. I'm getting fucking... I'm messing up here. But anyways. So they finally fixed it. And they finally... After, um, what? About four minutes later? All of a sudden, comes out. And so I thought it was supposed to be every two minutes that someone comes out. Like, who the fuck's, um... Yo, it's fucking around... Fucking up around backstage uh, in in the production truck. R fucking ridiculous. I was pissed, folks. I was fucking pissed. But everything was back. Um, you know where it was. And then we get to 
Debbie, yo, Debbie Malenko coming out. No relations to Debbie Malenko, but she was trained by the Malenkos. And she wrestled, um, you know, in days of Japan and everything. Um, yo, I don't, I don't know how old she is right now. Maybe she's in her, uh, 40s. Maybe her 50s. But, yeah, um, she's, she's there. And she got, um, she got laid for the fact, you know, get, you know to, to get in the ring. And they start fighting and everything. Uh, I'll give him a moment, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So. Demi, uh, Demi Malenko, I think she made, um, Lady Frost. Uh, unless it was someone who made her. I don't remember who made her, but I, I digress. Okay, she's 49 years old. Okay. And she's good. She's still good. Uh, uh she was she has been wrestling because uh, uh apparently she got she had an ankle injury at the time. Um, you know, since you know, someone from the late nineties, I guess they 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 explained on commentary or whatever. But whatsoever. But yeah, but she looks she, she still look good though. Uh then we get to Jenna and I coming out. Uh, uh who was who's being coming by Terrence Terrell. Then we had Jamie uh Senegay coming out with someone named Paula uh, Del uh, Marie, uh, Del, Del Mar, something like that. Yeah, pull up, uh, Del Mar. And she looked like a, she looked like a, a, a tranny. You know, with, with, with a lot of, uh, heavy makeup on. And she's, and she looks look like she's tall, too. Um. And you have this, you have, you have a moment where, um, a lot of women were, um, resting outside the ring. I say to myself, I hate that, too. I don't like when that's, when they do that shit. You know, had them work. Had them work in the ring. You know, they can't be. They can't be just on um, late. Um, taking timeouts. It's it, it was annoying. It was annoying me, me as fuck, man. Um, I hate these type those type, those type of matches where you got on um, your had them um you're resting outside the ring. Um. So then we had uh animation on going on, um. Jen and I, I don't remember how she got in the maid. Oh yeah, um, Chelsea Green. But before uh, Jen and I got in the maid, you had uh, Matt, Matt, Masha, um, some of it coming out, and I, I, I like her by the way. She's uh, she's got a good look. She wrestles in Japan, and she's from um, she's from Brooklyn, New York, I think, or um. So, uh, basically, uh, this is something about her being in New York, so... Uh, oh, I like her already. Uh, and I like her look, by the way. Yo, it reminds me of, you know, of, um... Bull... Bull... <sighs> can't... Can't... Try to remember her name now. Bunakata. I think that's her name, right? Bun... Bull... 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 Kana... Buna... Bunakano. Bunakano. There you go. Sorry, I can't. I, uh, I already forgot her name, and I should have forgot her name because you know, I like I like her back in the days too, in the nineties. Bunakano, there you go. That's what she might be of. Yo, uh, Ma Masha, uh, Sam, you know, Masha Samovic. So, and sorry, uh, I'm not doing my best here, folks. I apologize. Um, and I gotta go. I gotta. Go, I gotta um, get, get ready to go to work. So. So, anyways, um. So she comes out, and basically Jenna and I was supposed to be a monster and everything. She gets uh, pinned by three women in the match. One of them was Chelsea Green, Masha, and I believe one of them, I, I believe uh, the other one was, um, um, Jamie, uh, Senegay. Uh, Kyogun was rushing outside of the ring, by the way. Uh, it, it, she, she doesn't come back in the ring, though. Um, wait, before Jenna and I got in the ring, though, someone else got in the ring. It was, uh, Damian Malenko. She went for a submission move. Uh, I, I don't remember who she um, put the submission move on. I think it was on to Chelsea Green. Oh yeah, it was Chelsea Green. And Kira Hogan did something very clever, pinning um you know Demi Malenko while she gets a submission on uh, Chelsea Green, and Demi Malenko got eliminated by Kira Hogan. I'm like, holy shit, that was that was actually clever. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Basically, um, Kira Hogan outsmarted the 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 old veteran. You know, uh, you know, uh, I like, I love it. They they. They, they see, you see, this is what I'm talking about with, with NWA uh, and other promotions. They're booking Kyle Hogan strong. Unlike Impact fucking Wrestling during all those times that Kyle Hogan was there. That's how you book Kyle Hogan strong. 
なとは言うんだ、エパクラシンという表現。そう。あん。あ、でも、ファンに行くと、トゥー・レイン、カミアウ。トゥー・レイン was the hometown、uh, girl。And she、her family there。And she was、uh, well liked in there、uh,。She got the biggest pop、uh,。Besides Austin Kong、but、um,、but。But she got the biggest pop though, because she, she's a hometown、um, girl. And I, I like her, by the way. She, she's got a good look. She basically she,、uh, she knows, she knows martial arts and everything. And she got the martial arts robe and everything. And she was having a hard time taking off and everything. So I'm saying, wait a minute. If you're、uh, from the martial arts, you, you should know that you should take, take off your, you know, the belt off first, you know, the, the, you know, the back belt on first. Yo, know,、um, untie that first, you know. It's whatever.、Uh, Kieran got eliminated. I don't remember how she got eliminated, but she got eliminated. Um, actually, um, if I recall, yeah, 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 she got eliminated.、Uh, um, cause I believe, I don't think she was the final four. I could be wrong, but I think, I, 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 I'm assuming she was, she was the final four. Let me just double check. Uh, sorry, folks.、Uh, I, could, I could swear she was the final four. Um, where, where it pertains to. Uh, you know, this Battle Royal. Alright, give me one moment. I'm gonna find it right, I'm find it right, right now. Okay, this was not telling me. <laughs> Great. Let me, find, let me find the other one here. Maybe, maybe, this, will, maybe this will give me something.、Oh, I, I think, I think this, this is the one. Alright, here we go. Uh. No, it just gave me the order of, of you know, of entries. Which, by the way, Tulsi Green, Kiara Hogan, Bianca Carelli. Okay, now remember, Kim, Bianca Carelli came out. And then Thunder、uh, Kitty came out. And then Jenna Knight came out. And then that's when、uh, Lady Frost came out. And that's when the、uh, issue happened, by the way. Now, 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 now、uh, as I'm reading this, it, it's, all come, it's all come back to me.、Uh, Debbie Malenko, Jamie、uh, Senegay, Masha Slam. Um, yeah, Master Samovic and To the Lane. There you go. Now, they're not giving me the results of it, where it tends to um, all in、uh, order the nations. Let me just uh, do this again. Just put in the A. Alright. Let's see what we got here. And maybe I could have taken some notes down too, by the way. But. Okay. So much for that. <laughs> It's but whatever. But, anyways,、um, but Carol Gunn was gone、uh, from there too.、Um, Masha you know, hasn't been gone. And it was up to t o d y Lane and uh, uh, Chelsea, Chelsea Green, excuse me. And they were having a clinic. And then finally, Chelsea Green got the win with the, you know, with the Unprettier and got the win.、Um, you know, she was one of my, you know, I had three picks to,、um, here. My first pick was Chelsea Green. My second pick was Lady Frost. But my Dark Horse pick was. Kira Hogan.、Um, Kira Hogan came close, but no cigar.、Uh, Chelsea Green isn't winning instead. And Chelsea Green、um, won the trophy, the cup, and everything. And she puts over,、um, you know, to the lane, you know, you know sports ship and everything. And then also we get all the women coming out、uh, because of this、um, whole thing. You know, basically the show is always coming to an, to an end.、Um, everyone starts coming out,、um, you know, surrounding the ring. And then you have someone on the stage. 
Uh, yo, Jazz was on stage, and she's wearing a wig, uh, because she's bald. And, yeah, they're all clapping and everything, yo, it was an emotional night. So, she's green, uh, yo, um, and so being on the stage um, with them as well, and, yeah, every, yeah, everyone, uh, yo, was clapping and all that, it was, it was an emotional night, and, and that was it. Making the fourth roll, you know, because KFA's dead, I guess. <laughs> um, and there you go, that's not much to say about that. So yeah, and that's how the show ended. And, and that was your NWA in power from um, August 28th, 2021. And now I'm going to read you the highlights of, Emp of Empower. So over the night was Trevor Murdoch being there, because I had no idea he was going to be there. Awesome Kong, which pertains to Shock of the Night, which that was a shock uh, of her being there, um, you know, because I wasn't expecting that at all. Uh, I guess you could say thing with Trevor, but um, Trevor, you know, Trevor Murdoch. But but then again, this is also common talking about here. It's about an all woman pay per view and all that. So, but moment tonight was the all women's event, you know, as a whole, despite you know a, a lot of issues. But the, uh, the biggest moment was Gail Kim and Awesome Kong embracing in the ring of uh, everything that other uh, they, they've been through back in the days of TNA wrestling, and they could have um uh, something done in WWE. But that never happened, unfortunately. Oh, uh, I can't, I can't fault WWE for that, by the way. You know, it's, it wasn't WWE's fault about what, about, about the whole thing with Austin Kong. So, uh, pops of the night, uh, Austin Kong, obviously, and to the lane promo of the night, Mickey James. For your promo of the night, um, the end of a. Empower uh, intro video, you know, returns to open up the show. Segment of the night was Aaron Stevens. Um, I already forgot the oh, yeah, guy's name, and they, and they went for a different name by the way. It returns to their um, their characters. Um, okay, JR, uh, Krustos. Um, and also along with um, you know, May Valentine. Yo, but just the old school uh, promo and everything, old school NWA, you know, black and white and everything. That was a good segment. Um, entrance of the night was Molina. Performance of the night was Molina because of her performance uh, overall. Because I was, um, yo, know, cracking on her performance since coming back to wrestling. Um, after that performance with, um, yo, know, Dion Brazo, I'm gonna give her um this one. Moment of the night. I mean, performance of the night. Moving the night, Lena Hirsch's Avalanche German Suplex. The way she did it too. Twisting, um, uh, you know, uh, oh, uh, around um, Camille to go for that German suplex off the top rope was was awesome. Uh, finish of the night was Camille Spear to end the match to to retain the title. About we had Billy Corgan on all that by the way, where it tends to uh, you know, for saying the, um, the the old school NWA Women's World Championship title that was um once held by um, I can't remember her 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 first name. Um, Mew. Mutual, mutual Burke. <laughs> so, and yeah, she's um a well-known women's wrestler in 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 NWA, you know, back in those days. Um, mutual, mutual Burke. Um, uh, but yeah, we can we can see. Him. Yeah, I just want to out too, by the way. So, yo, Billy Cork will Billy Cork be in there. So, um, room match on the night was the 10 women's uh gauntlet match because, um, again, because of the camera work and everything and and everything else that I were I re talking about, which is to um, you know, resting outside the ring. But it was brutal overall because of the camera work. To get through, to get through it. I'm pretty sure all the people that watch it live were not happy about that. Show of the night was the NWA Women's World Championship Town match. Um, and match of the night was the Impact Knockout Championship Town match. And there you go. And that was um the NWA uh, Empower highlights. And my overall strength for the show.
um, after the service, uh, your it, despite your a lot of um, um, miscommunications, uh, botches, and uh, you know, slight errors, the show delivered uh, at the end of the day. Uh, they 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 had uh, they went through it, they got through it, um, you know, just despite your know, your know, poor poor um, you know, um, you know, um, overall, overall, in in a way, so. But I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a seven out of ten. That's all. That's that's that's, that's the um the, a fair um you know, rating I can give it. The wrapping instead. Thank you all for watching. For it's natural born thriller saying, peace on the streets, folks. I gotta get out here. You all take care.